Stop saying caller. There was no caller. There were no calls. They were emails. There is no caller. There was no caller. Don't say caller. There wasn't a caller. Well, anytime that I see a person, a website, or something else just disappear from the internet overnight with the cheering on of the mainstream media and the near total unanimity from the commentariat, I got a lot of questions. The difficulty in parsing the stories that I'm about to get into is the level of sensitivity which we teach, you know, scrutinizing basic facts and the notion that simply questioning people or standing up for a principle is in some way a total endorsement of the cause. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about Kiwi Farms. Personally, I did not even know this website existed until this controversy. Oh, he forward. misspoke. It is essentially. Can we take anything he says seriously? So with all that out of the way, let's talk about Kiwi Farms. Personally, I did not even know this website existed until this controversy burst forward. It is essentially a 4chan or 8chan style message board where people post a lot of crazy stuff. Like the cultures on those boards, a lot of it is mean spirit. Hey, hold on, it is not a 4chan style message board. Why would they say that, but okay. And awful indeed. One example, they hosted the video of the Christchurch massacre. Or would you say that? Is it? If you have like a thread and there are posts on it, is that considered a 4chan style like message board? Is that, or does 4chan just mean bad? Certainly they've been linked to harassment campaigns, which in the past have pushed people to suicide. It's important, I'm gonna lay out exactly how noxious that website is, because as usual, the edge cases are where precedents are made for speech on the internet. Things burst to the fore over the last month after a Twitch streamer known as Keffels or Clara Sorrenti began a campaign to get major internet service providers to drop Kiwi Farms. Sorrenti, a trans activist who unquestionably has been targeted and harassed by people from Kiwi Farms and across the internet, was pushed to make this public campaign after she, quote, got swatted. Now, for those who don't know, Swatting, it's a really horrific tactic. Online trolls will use that effectively involves calling in the police to an internet personality's house, claiming that they are in an imminent danger or imminent danger to someone else. This happened both to Sorrenti, it's happened to broadcasters like Tim Pool, many other internet personalities over the years. It's an especially vile- I will reiterate this for the 50 millionth time. Keffels was not swatted. That is not true. That is totally fucking made up. She was never swatted. Well, I don't know if she got swatted in Ireland or not. I can't speak to that. I don't know how much is made up past that point, but in Canada, she was not. Isle, an awful thing that has evolved. Sorrenti's campaign was rooted in the fact that Kiwi Farms appeared to be the epicenter of harassment against her. Now, Sorrenti's main target was a company called Cloudfare. If you're not familiar, effectively acts as- Explain? Swatting, why did they come knocking the door? Swatting somebody is when you call the police and you make it sound like somebody has a weapon and has either murdered somebody or is about to murder somebody and is suicidal at the same time. The reason why you do this is because police have to show up with no search warrant. They just fucking show up. They're ready to break down the door and they'll potentially use lethal means because they think there's like a threat there that has some sort of weapon that is like presenting a clear and present danger and there's like hostages involved. So there's like a time thing. There's a weapons thing. There's like an immediacy urgency, all of this. That is what swatting is. Cops showed up at her house with a fucking search warrant that people had gotten basically the cops to get because they were like sending emails on her name. It was bad. Like the cops showed up with a search warrant for stuff that like wasn't related to, um, that wasn't related to um, stuff she'd actually done. It was fake, but that is not swatting. Um, I don't know, but I would call what they did to Keffel swatting. That's not, it's not, it's not. I'm not gonna let you do stolen valor on that either. Um, people doing fake shit for the police to show up and stuff is really bad and it's not cool, but that's not swatting, okay? You don't get to call that swatting, all right? That's just not true. <clears throat> Didn't they fake a call saying she was gonna shoot a bunch of cis people? No, they sent emails out in her name. The cops knocked on the door and they showed up with a fucking search warrant, okay? This was not swatting, <laughs> okay? Swatting typically involves in Canada, they call it dynamic entry. In the US, we can call it no-knock warrants, but it's usually gonna involve the SWAT team showing up with like police breaking on the door and shit because they think you're like ready to kill somebody. What would you call it? I don't know what you would call it. Um, I don't know if there's a name for that kind of stuff, right? I haven't been swatted three times, okay? I have had the FBI show up at my house three times though because people have sent out fake emails or because people have sent out fake tips, but I wouldn't say I've been swatted by the FBI three times. That doesn't make sense. That's not what swatting is. It's not semantic. Uh, go experience both. Uh, it is absolutely not semantic. It is absolutely not semantic. Um, 
yeah, I, I don't know what else to tell you. If you think it is, you're just wrong, or you have no respect for or understanding of what any of the terms actually mean. I think it meant pedantic. He typed Semitic. I think, I'm assuming he meant semantic, but. Wouldn't it be fair to call it an attempted swatting if it was shown the caller had that intention specifically? Stop saying caller. There was no caller. There were no calls. They were emails. There is no caller. There was no caller. Don't say caller. There wasn't a caller. Do people think there was a caller? Wait, was there, was there another event that had a caller? Then who was phone? True. That's all right. It'll all come out in the manifesto. It's a security service for websites that prevents it from being subject to denial of service attacks. In the modern internet, it is almost thought of as a utility, as it ensures those websites with high traffic or controversial ones that your service will continue to date has no real market competitor. Cloudfare, before the last several years, cast itself as a free speech absolutist company. In 2011, the company ridiculed the idea it would take down an objectionable website, specifically noting, quote, Cloudfare is firm in our belief that our role is not of an internet censor. There are tens of thousands of websites currently using Cloudfare's network. Some of them contain information I find troubling, such as the nature of a free and open network. And as an organization that aims to make the whole internet faster and safer, such inherently will be our ongoing struggle. In effect, Cloudfare's declaration was inherent to an open internet is society's Wait, problems. Cloudfare? That by trying to litigate speech outside the bounds of what is already against the law, in this case, specific doxing or someone's personal identity publicly, child pornography, and other things, they would err on the side of not deciding who and what is on the internet. Over the years, Cloudfare and its CEO provided service oh, to websites from Al-Qaeda, white Based. supremacists, but everything changed after the Great Awakening of 2017. After years of ridiculing the idea that the $20 billion company could decide what to censor and what not, the bounds of the law of Cloudfare changed its position. The CEO, Matthew Prince, wrote in 2017 after the Charlottesville riots, he was suspending service to a white nationalist website called The Daily Stormer. He wrote, I'm almost a free speech absolutist, and quote, I woke up this morning in a bad mood and decided to kick them off the internet. He underscored, quote, it's important what we did today not set a precedent. Prince acknowledged that under US law, he is allowed to effectively ban whatever he wants and noted he probably should not be allowed to do that. It was a major demarcation point for the internet. Of course, it came at one of the most fraught points in Trump's presidency. The entire problem, of course, is that once the seal is broken, despite Prince's promises, it has now happened again and again. Cloudfare next acted when it took down 8chan in 2019. The cause for the denial of service was the fact that El Paso gunman had posted his screed to the website before going on his killing spree. And Cloudfare noted that the Christchurch shooter had done so as well. In his decision, here's what Cloudfare said, quote, the rationale is simple. They have proven to be lawless and that lawlessness has caused multiple tragic deaths. Even if A-Chan may not have violated the letter of the law in refusing to moderate their hate-filled community, they have created an environment that revels in violating its spirit. Notice that phrase, even if A-Chan may have not violated the letter of the law. This itself is the problem in a whole nutshell. We have one company which is basically capable of this. They started out for free speech. As what happens to societies, there are really some sick and terrible people who use the internet, like exist, and much to the chagrin of many users in the free speech era. As long as those people don't break the law, they don't lose their freedom. Now, of course, it's Cloudfare's right under the current system. They can do as they please. And the reason I'm framing things is this way, because getting bogged down in those exact details of who harassed who or who didn't is genuinely beside the point when we're talking about exact policies which govern the entire internet, the method of mass communication in 2022. So with all that exposition, that brings us to the latest episode. Cloudfare continued after the denial of service to 8chan to say that it stood for free speech and did not want to act in a similar manner. 
after the Sorrenti continued her campaign with the help of mainstream media supporters who rallied to her cause, Cloudflare initially responded they were sticking to their guns. The CEO noted that the company regretted taking down 8chan and Daily Stormer, saying they were, quote, troubled by it, especially because it encouraged foreign governments to campaign for their websites and to drop service to drop human rights organizations in their countries. The CEO and other executives argued CloudShare should be treated as a utility company on the internet, saying, quote, just as the telephone company doesn't terminate your line if you say awful, racist, bigoted things, we have concluded in consultation with politicians, policymakers, experts at turning off security <laughs> services Jesus. because what we think you publish is despicable is the wrong policy. I agree with that, while acknowledging that what was done to Sorrenti and the threats against her are horrific. Here's the problem. The moment Cloudflare realized major enterprise clients might drop them because the mainstream media started asking why they supported harassment, they reversed course literally overnight. 72 hours later, the company reversed its policy, saying that they were immediately going to drop the website Kiwi Farms, saying, quote, the rhetoric on Kiwi Farms site and specific targeted threats have escalated over the last 48 hours to the point that we believe there is an unprecedented emergency and immediate threat to human life, unlike that we have previously seen from Kiwi Farms or any other customer before. That moment- Keep in mind that that elevated threat, there is zero evidence and i think now i think there's contrary evidence after jesse's show i think i haven't listened to it yet i've only talked to him about it but um that 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 the one threat or whatever that did happen didn't even come from um kiwi farms like that docks outside of um kevil's ireland apartment or whatever but um i have to listen to jesse's thing i don't know exactly what he released for that moment was celebrated by Sorrenti by the mainstream media. They cheered on the decision, including censorship advocate Taylor Lorenz at the Washington Post. The issue is the facts do not line up with Cloudflare's version of events at all. Cloudflare claimed, miraculously, <laughs> things had changed after it published its defense of Kiwi Farm, citing a so-called imminent threat to human life. But as journalist Jesse Sengel has uncovered, there were exactly oh, two violent threats that were published on this website. Both were immediately yanked down. Sengel's version of events reveals that harassment against Sorrenti was undoubtedly happening, that Kiwi Farms was a major place for it, but that within the bounds of current law, it appeared not to violate it. Here is where I see the problem. Cloudfare, the mainstream media, others are effectively now establishing a new rule for the internet. If you can get enough people to complain, if you can get the media on your side, and effectively if you can claim your life is in danger, whether true or not, you can get a website taken off the internet. Can't prove it, but man, wouldn't it be convenient if that bomb threat was made by uh, <clears throat> somebody in Kevil's camp? Wouldn't that just be so convenient? Now, who knows who actually made it because, you know, I guess we'll never know, but. Just to show you how bipartisan weaponization of personal grievance can be, Here's Marjorie Taylor Greene also advocating for taking down Kiwi Farms because it may, again, may have been the place where a similar swatting incident was organized against her. But it is, isn't it concerning that such a website exists? So like, why does that even exist? Mm -hmm. that, that website needs to be taken down. There should be no business or, or any kind of service where you can target your enemy. That's absolutely absurd. When removal of websites is on the table, any aggrieved party will seize on it for their own benefit. Kiwi Farms is now dead. That's not really an exaggeration. As the administrator of Kiwi Farm says, it will likely never be available on the open internet again. I underscore, litigating the exact facts of the exact threats belies the point. The point is, this power cannot and should not reside with a single company. And these single points of failure should not be litigated by pressure campaigns and vibes. We need rules, actual rules, laws in place that govern this thing. Otherwise, just as we see with Cloudflare's evolution, the rules simply just change with the times. In fact, after Cloudflare's decision, Kiwi Farms has now been dropped by its competitor. It's been removed from the Wayback Machine, meaning you cannot even read its archive. Iceland seized its domain in the country. Google delisted it completely from search results, and Google Voice has booted the administrator. It's as if the site literally never existed at all, all because it became a cause celeb online. 
The First Amendment has 200 years of case law that established the extremely limited exceptions to which free speech is allowed to be limited by the government and authority. This standard has stood the test of time because at times being uncomfortable for whatever social movement is considered acceptable. Its existence is a recognition that dissent is vital and must be protected. The absence of this law, the existence of the human element, which effectively utilities for being online leaves anyone who occupies any area of dissent vulnerable to effective disappearance if the right people take notice. I fundamentally reject this framework. And I'm watching in alarm while the rules and the precedence of the internet just changed, marched in a more censorious direction for the third time <laughs> what? in the last five years. It is capable to understand and acknowledge that while also acknowledging the horrific harassment that was directed at Ms. Sorrenti and many others who are online, we have to solve this problem as soon as possible, because if we don't, the journalists will be in charge. Given how wrong they are, that should scare the living hell out of you. So this took me way too long to get to the bottom yeah, of. I'm glad you did, though. Crystal. I had cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it. Wow, dividing the country.